It's here, guys! It's finally happening! <laughs> Dream, after a good couple of weeks, finally released his response video, which has been long awaited, and in my opinion, long overdue. I'll be honest, I was thinking, man, if this guy's writing books on Twitter, what's his video gonna be at? Like, you know, and I look, and it's it's over an hour and a half long. We're moving on to over an hour. It's like over an hour long. <laughs> And I'm like, that makes complete sense. That makes complete sense. I watched the whole thing and I was interested to see what he had to say. I thought it was just going to be about like the Cantu and like the new grooming allegations and stuff. And he covered a lot more than I thought he would. You know, it was a whole lot more than I expected. I mean, it wasn't unwelcome. I, I kind of like to sit on the fence with this kind of stuff. So this kind of, I, I enjoyed to see his side of the story as opposed to reading through hundreds and hundreds of Twitter DMs, you know, because and messages and stuff on Twitter from him and another and like everybody just dogging on everybody. It was it was a little bit refreshing. It was very refreshing to watch the video uh, instead. And if you want to watch it, I highly recommend it. Link to that video will be in the description down below. As far as put together, I think it's pretty well put together and honestly, I'd much rather see videos like this in the future instead of like rapidly produced videos that, that completely count contradict each other. I think of this kind of video where it was put together, it was well edited, it was well put together and it was um, well thought out. It was not contradictory as far as I can tell uh, in any place. Granted, there are some strange inconsistency, weird spots, which we will get into at the end of the video after, you know, I've laid it down for y'all. Today, however, we are closing a chapter on the Cantu drama. Yeah, and basically the stuff that I posted about in my last video. The grooming allegations, you know, pretty much all that good stuff. My intentions are never to leave a video open-ended, uh, and I had complete intention to come back, you know, watch the video and give my take on it and break it down for y'all and just report on it basically. And that's exactly what I am doing. Uh, as always, you know, both any opinions, you know, are completely accepted, right? You know, if you finish this video and you, you know, your mind's changed about Dream, great. You know, if you finish the video and you still think he's a rotten pedophile, you know, you have every right to think so, right? That's the great thing about, you know, being human and rights and stuff, you know? You're entitled to your own opinion. And I especially, you know, when looking at videos like this, I like to hear both sides before I personally come to a conclusion. So this is my conclusion as well. I'm making up my mind as well on this, you know, and if you guys hate me for what I have to say, you know, I do not hate you guys for what you will say, you know, because you are, again, entitled to your opinion. And the conclusion I came with last time was that Dream pretty much just needs to stop posting on Twitter, stop just absolutely destroying his own reputation, posting a bunch of random stupid tweets, and that we all need to just wait and see what information comes out when it comes out, right? And I mean, here it is, in pretty good detail, I might add. I mean, if you, this video isn't going to change your mind, as I said, uh, to be honest, it's not about that. And to be honest with you, I'm not, honestly, I'm not, I'm not losing sleep over this guy. This guy doesn't bother me, you know? I, I don't go to bed thinking about him 24-7. I, I really don't think about him, to be honest with you, uh, a whole lot at all, which is pretty great, uh, honestly. Put that in your pipe and suck on it. <laughs> So let's start with the Gumball versus Dream drama. The big one. Not really that big, but pretty crazy. Essentially, to catch you up to speed, Nicholas Cantu. Very popular voice actor. Man in his 20s with the voice of a boy in puberty. I don't know how that happened, but apparently it is what it is. Called Dream on Twitter a pedophile. Dream didn't like that, you know? And it wasn't even him. It wasn't even Dream. It was a parody account. Dude got fooled. He got absolutely fooled, you know? Well, Dream didn't like that and basically released a video of him uh, and himself in an Uber driver together 
and Cantu is acting like a complete and total moron, just an absolute idiot. You know, Cantu claimed that everything he said was caused by excessive amounts of, you know, alcohol, which he'd consume, which to be fair is believable. Uh, and Dream even states that he was incredibly drunk. Turns out Cantu is only 20 years old, right? Which means he's not supposed to have alcohol, you know? People start to say that Dream was, you know, given alcohol to minors and crazy stuff like that, which doesn't make any sense considering the whole story, which when you want to end someone's career, you'll look over, you know, the facts to create a narrative that best suits your needs, right? And hating on Dream is super popular. I wish I, you know what? I should have got on the bandwagon a long time ago, you know? I would have had so many viewers. So here's the whole story, basically. As said by Dream in his video, uh, and to be honest with you, this lines up with what I was reading and what I heard and what we heard uh, in the last video. Pretty well, pretty, I don't think there's any inconsistencies, you know, uh, if there is, you know, let me know. Honestly, the last video I made, I, I said some stuff, it made absolutely no sense. Number one, because I was reading it wrong. Uh, but, you know, let me know. Honestly, your uh, feedback is the best thing I can possibly receive when making these videos. Because I don't want to mess this kind of stuff up. Because this stuff can actually hurt people. This stuff can hurt their careers. And I don't want to do that. The whole story is that Dream and some friends attended another party. And Nicholas just happened to be at this party. He was already drinking. And he even assaulted uh, Dream and later lied about it, right? And Dream called somebody, you know, said that he called somebody a and uh, that he was just standing up for him. Uh, this was later completely disproven, and Dream's testimony was backed up by witnesses who were also there. They also decided to leave the party after it was late, and, you know, since there was a few of them, you know, there wasn't that many, they decided they were going to take an Uber. This is when the video takes place, right? Cantu's in the front seat with the driver, and Dream and another friend are in the back, right? And during the duration of the video, Cantu just goes off on the Uber driver, saying that he has Down syndrome, as well as some other not nice things. Things that are definitely not appropriate for any scene, to be honest with you. Uh, not very smart to say, especially when you are a very popular public figure. Uh, like himself and dreams decides you know he's gonna he's gonna back this uber driver up right he's gonna stand up to him which is you know honestly anybody should do no matter who it is you know whether it's dream or not dream you know they need to stick up for him right and uh basically Cantu absolutely roasts him you know using various racial slurs and just slurs in general you know the good stuff he says that he is a michelangelo of his time i mean i think he's confused i'm pretty sure he's the blue one he says that Dream is going to be forgotten like the dust in the sand when you're in the Sahara and you're surrounded by a thousand billion sand particles. He's going and he's going to be erected as a statue in gold. That is absolutely hilarious. He is such good with the comebacks, I will say. He claims in the video that he's not drunk, which is funny because later he says he was. Make up your mind! The next day, Nicholas sent an apology to Dream which is pretty cool and based, right? I think this apology is pretty cool and based. Nope. But if you start to read it, it's not really an apology as much as it is him blaming his actions on various things. Uh, and basically, he's not taking responsibility for anything, no matter what, you know, he might want you to believe. Hey, man. Hey, I hope you had a good time last night, but I don't, don't feel right knowing I was dogging on you like a king kusso. No chihuahua. I was coming for your neck. So I wanted to apologize for hitting you, and I think that I slapped you once, which was totally out of line. Even as a joke. That ain't right, so I apologize deeply for that one. Pretty good so far. Seems nice of him. What is Khabibi talking about? Well, yeah, man. I was drinking and smoking weed, which is, and people in my wife and doctor say, it's horrible for me. I went against my better judgment because I had a baby falling out with my mom, and I thought my girlfriend was about to break up with me. Not an excuse for my actions or mistakes, but just thought it was important for you to know. I'm not sure if he's saying that he had a baby and a falling out with his mom, 
or that is just a typo of bad falling out with his mom. Again, punctuation is just non-existent in this like whole message. Like the only type of punctuation is a period. Like there's no commas. I can't tell where one sentence begins or you know where pause or what. I don't even know, right? I don't know. I can't read it. For those comments, you know, saying you don't seem to believe he's sincere and your reading tone diminishes you know, the, the information, you know, is diminishing his apology. Yes, in my opinion, I don't believe that that is a sincere apology. There wasn't any reason to reveal information of that nature except to try and pass off some of the blame, right? Uh, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. However, I do think that, you know, what he said is true, and these are completely valid reasons, you know, if if what he said is true. It's just not something you should say when apologizing. I'm sorry everyone for reading the quotes in a terrible way. It's just that my goldfish died and I got a flat tire. So, yeah. You don't give excuses to why your actions were a certain way when you're literally trying to apologize. It makes no sense. It's better just to admit that you're in the wrong, take the L, and move on, right? Right! Coming back to more recent, Nicholas uh, made various strange and stupid comments on Twitter, uh, basically about Dream wishing him death in some very, in, in replies, you know, that's kind of weird, calling him a pedophile. Two later, Dream responded with this tweet. And after various online exchanges, released the car video. Uh, and this video was not recorded by Dream. Dream was not in possession of this video. He was not holding on to this video for later date. Which is another thing that people claimed, right? That Dream was holding on to this for, like, uh, saving it for a rainy day, right? Now, Dream didn't have this video. At least this is what Dream says. Uh, that it wasn't him who was recording. Which actually makes sense. Uh, considering Cantu wanted the video to be recorded and even said oh is it going is it going good it's going to be great for the channel you know it's going to be great for my popularity what an idiot yesterday dream posted his explanation video and in that video he talks about the car ride and various things that went on and he even provides proof uh that being an interview with the uber driver himself which also will be in the description. And I'm sure some people will think that Dream paid him off, right? Paid him off, uh, you know, to agree with him. And I suppose that's possible. I myself uh, prefer to think that it's real and the Uber driver is being honest and, you know, upfront and open about the situation. Uh, because the Uber driver didn't necessarily care about the tip, which makes me think that he wouldn't care uh, about getting... Like, he doesn't seem to be in it for the money, is what I'm saying, and my point is, maybe I'm stupid and wrong, that could be, you know? But, I mean, his apology, make, his, his video makes sense, the interview makes sense, the stuff he says makes sense. Throughout the video, Dream goes and explains and debunks rumors and allegations. And looking at it as a person who doesn't really hold any opinion, uh, one way or the other, I myself am inclined to believe him, you know? Uh, quotes taken out of content, text. He wraps up nicely, gives plenty of testimonies. Uh, one from the most alleged victim, the most recent alleged victim, Jamie. Uh, let's break this all down because this is a little weird as well. And this also happened. On November 18th, during all of the crazy Cantu drama and stuff, uh, a count named Burner22 uh, posted this. Cool story, but why were you sexting, receiving nudes, and sending nudes to a 16 slash 17 year old in 2019 when you were 20 and saying her are so nice when their age was in their bio? And explain what you did with Jamie when she was 16 slash 17 and you were 20. As you can imagine, these allegations spread like wildfire. They spread incredibly fast due to the popularity uh, of Hating Dream and the fact that all this other stuff was going on at the same time. It just surged, right? Obviously, the account posted this, you know, like its name suggests, it was a burner account, right? They accused Dream of inappropriate messages as well as moaning on a video. 
which is hilarious. They posted screenshots of Discord messages, uh, who they claim to be messages between two anonymous users, one being allegedly Dream's friend, uh, who confirms that all this went down. All this is completely true, you know? Granted, they don't actually know who Jamie is, right? Uh, and in this post here, they claim Jamie left the internet and private accounts back in 2020. So they're not even in contact with Jamie. Um, I, but Dream knows who Jamie is. Dream knows exactly who she is and absolutely blew this allegation out of the water. Like he absolutely destroyed it. Jamie is one of the accounts that Dream follows. And while a lot of people would use this as information and proof to say, oh yeah, it totally happened. Uh, Skeppy follows her as well and Spifey and Verb. So, you know, quite a few uh, popular content creators follow her. So you can't really use that as proof. You know, if it was just Dream, yeah, it would be a little strange, but you know. Uh, and the thing is, she didn't quit Twitter in 2020 or private her accounts. She liked a tweet literally from November 20th this year and posted throughout 2022. And there's proof on screen of that, which Dream provides. It's Dream's pictures and stuff. From all this, we can gather that whoever is posting these allegations obviously doesn't know uh, what or who they're talking about, right? And another thing is that they claim to have posted these videos with permission. Well, they obviously don't know Jamie, and as Dream pointed out, he didn't give them permission to use him. So, you know, who gave him permission, right? Another thing is that they word, they post it and word it so that they kind of cover all their bases, right? Wording it such as, you know, when her age was in her bio, which, you know, if I was going to make a case against someone, this is something you should do, you know, cover all the bases, make sure all the facts are there. Uh, the problem being with this is there are no facts there, like at all. <laughs> and what makes these claims even more unbelievable is that their claims to have gotten permission to post these, there's no receipts with that. They don't show any screenshots of some of Dream or of, um, uh, Jamie posting, you know, telling them, hey, release the picture or all this stuff. They don't actually show proof of that. So that's literally a load of crap, right? We can gather that their only purpose is to end somebody's career, right? They can say that they have proof. They say they have proof of dream, that it's dream Snapchat in the pictures, which they never do. That's because it's not. And uh, they don't have any proof. This is so stupid, such a stupid thing, right? They did eventually release who um, sent the screenshots, and here's what Dream has to say on that. They did reveal who they got the original screenshots from, so let's see what that person has to say and why the burner was so confident in their claims. Quote, I don't know Jamie. I've never known her. I've never had a private or a public interaction with her at all, unquote. Wow, seems like they have a whole lot of information. So I reached out to them to try and find anything that I could find to find out what this was even about because I've never been confronted by one of my friends for grooming and I've never groomed anybody. So I found out who was anonymous in these messages and let's hear what they have to say. These screenshots are extremely out of context and used disingenuously to tell a story about Dream that isn't true at all. I haven't spoken to Dream in a very long time, but to my knowledge, he has not interacted with underage fans inappropriately or in any way that could be considered grooming. These DMs were posted by the burner without my permission and without ever contacting me beforehand. They were sent to the burner by a vulnerable person that was upset and being taken advantage of while under the influence of alcohol. I want to be anonymous and stay completely out of this because all of the terrible stuff I've seen happen to everyone mentioned on both sides is very scary. This conversation was private in my life and no one deserves to have their personal life dug through because of anonymous people making false claims without knowledge or context about anything they're saying. This person was not involved at all and did not consent to anything. Now, if you're a little confused, I am too. This is a burner account making up things. Their story makes no sense. Okay, so let's just summarize this. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. They did not know Jamie. 
They got none of their information from Jamie. They even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active to this day. They posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor. They never showed proof that it was from me or my Snapchat profile. They never showed proof of who it was to. They cropped context from screenshots, lied publicly and said I admitted the videos were from me. They falsely alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to Jamie, who they said was a victim of mine. The person in the screenshots claims that I'm not a groomer, that they're extremely out of context, and that the burner doesn't even know what was being discussed, and that now their personal life is being dug into due to an anonymous burner account. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger, you can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat without tapping the button to open it. So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. If you replied asking any questions, you got called a groomer supporter. Despite the fact that the proof was a video of a video of a video from screenshots of DMs of screenshots of DMs. You have to go four people deep to find anyone that has ever talked to Jamie. I'm not even in any of these screenshots. And the video of the video of the video has like 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Most people spreading this did zero research. From the comments of the video, it seems to have been received pretty well, to be honest with you. But uh, some people do make some good counterpoints. Uh, number one being the receipts that he posted in the description are just stuff typed out on paste bin and aren't pictures of direct evidence. However, uh, in the statement which he posted being Jamie's statement, he says, if one, if Jamie was a victim of mine, why would I lie and make up a fake statement from her when she could easily debunk it? This makes complete sense. This m makes logic work for me. You know, he's putting himself in a very easily destructive, destroyed position, right? Uh, that if this did happen jamie could come out and say listen this is what's going down this guy lied and provide actual proof that or say that she you know she's putting her himself in a very vulnerable position uh and this whole explanation makes sense but then we have to consider his other evidence specifically his amanda slash dream insta dm transcripts right and this transcripts there isn't really a way as far as i can tell you know uh, whether this is fake or not, uh, if the messages are missing or deleted or anything like that, it would have been way better if he would have provided pictures instead of just typing it out, especially since he seems to have the evidence in order to type it out, right? At least that's what I would think, you know? Uh, like, why would you release this transcript when you could give us the actual thing, right? We did receive, after the video, not from Dream, uh, a picture alleged to be Amanda claiming to have lied, and this is on the screen now. I'm not saying that that's real or not, this is just what I found today on uh, Twitter, and this came out, somebody posted this the same day, or the day after the video came out, which was yesterday. This is the one area that seems, a that's the one area that seems a little sketchy. Of course, Twitter wasn't really a fan. I saw a lot of posts uh, just before recording this where people were like saying, uh, he shouldn't be advertising his merch under his video, under his apology video. Uh, number one, that's not in his control. Uh, and uh, two, it wasn't an apology video. YouTube has a feature uh, which, if it were to be disabled, disables it for the whole channel. Uh, so it's not something you can just turn on and off on one video. Uh, and as well, Dream did state that all this money is going to charity, and the charity link is in the description of Dream's video. Uh, granted, this year hasn't been a great year for charity, and it's been a huge year for charity fraud, if you know, you know, right? After the video was released, uh, the burner count released... Uh, the person who leaked the Discord information, right? Specifically the person who wanted to be left anonymous. So they they literally leaked who it was against their best wishes, which is such a scummy thing to do, to be honest with you, uh, to save their own skin, obviously. Uh, they claim that Sam, this, lay, this person here, who is the anonymous person, purposely misled them or else has now lied in Dream's video and pushes all the blame for everything onto Sam. 
Uh, and then Sam released this statement. This is probably the only thing I'll say about this. I didn't intentionally mislead anyone, and I'm sorry for doing so. I gave them the videos and Jamie's Snapchat in hopes that they would contact her for further clarification. They did not. After speaking to Dream, getting clarity on the situation, and hearing what Jamie had to say, I obviously regretted my choice and realized there, are, there were many misunderstandings, including my false perception of Dream at the time. Any messages sent to them after was to protect myself from thinking they would attack me when his video came out. I did not lie at all in Dream's video. I should have never DM'd Burner, and they should have never posted it without talking to Jamie and confirming. I will be deactivating soon. In my opinion, his explanation makes sense, and I'm going to choose to believe him based on the evidence at hand, uh, since it seems pretty solid as far as I can tell, as well as the statements from Sam and the Uber driver. Very nice guy, I might add. At the end of the day, as I said before, I'm not losing any sleep over this guy, right? I don't watch his content, and that's fine, you know? Most people dislike him because he cheated at speedrunning, and you know what? That is completely valid, because whether he knew it or not, he still did cheat, you know? It still happened, and I can respect somebody's opinion for believing that way. Uh, however, when it comes to the grooming allegations, he did a very good job explaining himself, uh, and every one of them, the way, you know, the allegations, he explained them in a way that made sense to me. As far as I could tell, there weren't any contradictions, you know, uh, granted, I didn't follow the previous allegations, to be honest with you. Uh, number one, because I didn't care a whole lot, you know, and number two, because I wasn't following the Minecraft community at the time. I've kept more to myself, uh, mostly in the past couple of years, and I think that I've benefited from that, uh, in that I has have of right av I have as of right now not had to break ties with anybody, you know. Anyhow, I am interested to hear you guys' uh thoughts and opinions down below in the comment. Honestly, really excited. What did you take away from the explanation video? Let me know, honestly all opinions are welcome right please subscribe we're super close to 400 subscribers which is absolutely amazing right and i couldn't have made it this far without you please leave a like down below as it helps this video you know get out to more people so that they can see it thank you and uh you all have a merry christmas or hanukkah or kwanzaa or whatever you guys you know happy holidays i i personally celebrate christmas you know i love christmas i love getting presents uh the only thing is you know i do get a lot of coal but, you know, I've adapted. I've converted to a coal furnace. Uh, yeah. You have a Merry Christmas.